Are you tired of getting your trailing arms hung up? Well, Super ATV's got the fix with our heavy duty high clearance trailing arms. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to get them installed on this Polaris Razor Turbo. So let's get to it. Now we're back here at the rear of the machine. The first thing you're gonna do is remove your rear wheel and tire. Once you've done that, we're gonna go overhead and we're gonna disconnect our shock as well as our sway bar link. We've already loosened our hardware up. So we'll go ahead and just remove the nut off the sway bar link here. And if you're having issues with your sway bar link getting it removed, just go ahead to the other side and disconnect the sway bar link from that side as well. So just disconnect it and then we'll pick up on our trailing arm. We'll go ahead and remove our bolt. And we'll let the trailing arm come down. Then we'll go ahead and remove our cotter pin out of our castle nut for our axle. We've already done that, so we'll go ahead and remove our nut here. Then we'll go ahead and remove our nuts off of our radius arm bolts on the uppers and lowers. We've already loosened our hardware, so we'll just go ahead and remove the nuts here. Let's we'll go ahead and we'll pick up on the trailing arm. And then our bolts will just slide right out nice and easy. Then I like to take my bolts and just stick them right back through the radius arm so our bushings don't fall out. Pick up here, move the radius arm. You may have to kind of pull your trailing arm away a little bit. Set your radius arm out of the way. Then we'll go ahead and remove our brake caliper bolts. Let your caliper hang down like that. You can grab it and just kind of flip it up. We're gonna end up removing all the brake lines off the trailing arm anyways. Let's go ahead and we'll grab our hub here. And you'll just wanna wiggle it off. Sometimes if it gets stuck, what you can do is take a rubber mallet, tap on the end of the axle shaft here a little bit, and then just kind of tap your hub. Then you'll just wanna slip your hub off. Once you get your hub off, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trailing arm away enough to get your axle out. Just like this, and we'll go ahead and remove our axle. We don't wanna let our axle hang, that'll crease our boot. Then the boot's more prone to tear, which is not gonna be a good deal. So now we'll go ahead and remove the bearing carrier off the trailing arm here. We'll just go ahead and remove all the hardware and remove it. We'll go ahead and set it aside, and then we're gonna go through and all the brake lines where they're connected. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. So once we have all our brake line clips removed, we'll just take our caliper. We'll just sit it on our lift here just to get it out of the way. Also, we took our shock and we just tied it up just to make it easier to get our trailing arm off and to get our new one on. So the last thing you need to do to get your trailing arm off your machine is disconnect the bolt located straight up here on the frame. Ours is already loose. If you are running a skid plate, an aftermarket skid plate or a super ATV skid plate, you'll need to loosen the hardware right here on this section. That way you can pull it down to get your socket in here and you'll just take a wrench on the back side to loosen it. Then once you have your hardware loose, you'll just pick up on the trailing arm, grab your hardware, remove it, and just slide your trailing arm out. Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our new trailing arm. We're gonna get it installed to our machine, just like this. There'll be a zip tie holding your bushings in. Just go ahead and cut that off. And we're gonna slide this right into the channel on the frame where we removed our factory trailing arm. And once you have it in place, just reach through, make sure it's lined up. So once you have your trailing arm attached to the frame, we're gonna go ahead and grab all our hardware to secure our bearing carrier to our new trailing arm here. So you'll slide your bolt through, then your washer, and then your nut. Just go through and repeat that for the rest of the holes and then fully tighten the hardware. 
Next, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our axle. Get it lined up with the grooves. And this axle's brand new. On an axle that's been used, a lot of times you can plunge it, get it to go in. Makes it a little bit easier. If not, just take your rubber mallet. Just tap it right in. Just like that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our trailing arm and pick up on it. Let's kind of get our axle started back into our wheel bearing. Like that. And we'll go ahead and grab our upper radius arm. Make sure your bushings are on. Slide your bolt through just like that. Go ahead and start your nut. And we'll go ahead and reattach our hub. So once you have your hub on, we'll go ahead and grab your axle nut and your washer or washers. Install that castle nut. We're just gonna go ahead and run this up here. Till it lines up. While we're at it, we'll just go ahead and put our cotter pin in as well. Bend your cotter pin up and out of the way. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our caliper, slide it on. Grab our two 15 millimeter brake caliper bolts. Get them lined up. Get them started. Now we're gonna go ahead and fully tighten our brake caliper bolts here. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our lower radius arm. We're gonna go ahead and attach it. Pull the bolt out. Line it back up in the pocket. Take our nut, start the nut. Now we got our nuts good and started. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and reattach our shock and sway bar link. I like to just take the sway bar length and get it started down into the pocket on the trailing arm right here. So that way whenever you lift up, Everything's gonna line up perfectly. We're gonna grab this bolt out of the hardware kit. This is gonna be our new shock bolt. It's a little bit longer due to the trailing arm being wider. Put it all the way through and then you'll take this nut right here. Start it on the back side. Whenever you reattach your sway bar linkage, you wanna make sure that your sway bar link is on the inside, facing towards the motor on the sway bar. And then you just wanna go through, fully tighten all your hardware, make sure everything's tight, and then we're gonna start attaching our brake lines. Then we're gonna grab our new brake line clips, as well as hardware from the hardware kit. Then we're just gonna go ahead and attach them to the trailing arm. You just want to go through, tighten up all your brake lines, adjust them to where they need to be, then just repeat all these steps for the opposite side. And there you have it. That's how super quick and easy it is to install Super ATV's high clearance trailing arms on this Razor Turbo. For more information on these trailing arms or any of Super ATV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.